minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engines full power and lift off of Falcon 9 and Inmarsat. Go Falcon, go Inmarsat. Vehicles pitching down range. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Power wrench telemetry nominal. We are just about a minute into flight, and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from pad 40. Falcon 9 is supersonic. At Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying Inmarsat's I-6F2 payload. We are coming up on max Q here. Max Q. And great news, we have just passed through max Q. That is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees on ascent. Now, the rocket is typically, typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. So you can keep an eye on the stage one telemetry that's on the bottom left hand of your screen there. You can see those nine M1D engines and back burning engine bright. Chill has started. Burning bright there on your screen. We do have three events coming up in rapid succession. That will be Miko stage separation and SES-1. Miko is main engine cutoff. That's where we shut down all nine of the M1D engines that you see burning bright on your screen. That will help slow the stage down and prepare for stage separation. That's where the first stage will separate from second stage. First stage will come back home down to Earth while second stage continues with SES-1. That's second stage engine start one. And that MVAC engine will ignite on the second stage. We are coming up on those three events here in a few seconds. Miko stage separation in SES-1. Main engine cut off. Stage separation. And back ignition. And very cool views of Miko stage separation. On your right hand screen, you can see that MVAC engine is glowing bright. That has now ignited. On your left hand screen, you can see the grid fins deploying on that first stage. Now, coming up next will be fairing separation. The fairing helps protect the payload on ascent, but once we're in the vacuum of space, we no longer need that protection. So we will jettison the fairing halves, and that's coming up here in a few seconds. Fairing separation. And great call out and visual confirmation that the fairing halves have deployed. And we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again tonight once they make their way back down to Earth. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. It's about T plus four minutes into tonight's mission. If you are just joining us now, Falcon 9 has lifted off successfully, carrying Inmarsat's I 6 F 2 payload. Now, we're about to begin the first of the two planned MVAC burns for satellite deploy. Around T plus six minutes, you should see on your screen the first stage's entry burn. To start the entry burn, we will relight three of the M 1D engines, starting with the center engine known as E 9, followed shortly by the E 1 and the E5 engines, which will slow down the vehicle as it passes back into Earth's atmosphere. As Falcon 9 is coming back down really fast, we need to slow down to reduce the re-entry forces, which will then help us recover and reuse that first stage. 
During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. Vehicles on a nominal trajectory. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, or commonly known as a rocket's plume. This deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. Now that soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle, making it a little sooty. Oftentimes, prior to a launch, you can see that sit on your first stage. As you can see on your screen, the second stage is glowing red. And that is our MVAC engine. Now, coming up in a few seconds, we should be seeing the entry burn begin for the first stage as the booster comes back on its way to Earth. As you can see on the left side of your screen, that is the first stage. And we're just a few seconds away from the entry burn begin. Stage one FTS says saved. Stage one entry burn startup. As you can see and hear it, stage one entry burn has begun. Stage one entry burn shut down. As you can see in here on that, stage one entry burn has shut down. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of space flight, which enables more investment in critical scientific research. Falcon 9 on your screen today is supporting and doing the re-entry burn for the third time. Previously supported the GPS-3, Space Vehicle 6, and the Crew-5 missions. Vehicles on a nominal trajectory. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level. These achieve around 190,000 pounds of thrust during ascent and descent. Fun fact, at liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power and is consuming approximately about 700 gallons of fuel per second. That MVAC engine on your screen is optimized by 220,000 pounds of thrust in vacuum. That is the vacuum stage of space. One, transonic. Coming up next, we should be seeing shutdown on our MVAC engine on the second stage, followed quickly by our landing burn on the first stage as it's coming stage back two down. Stage two has saved. Terminal guidance. MVAC shut down. And there you can see it in here on the nets. We have confirmation of Seco stage 1. Stage 1 landing burn. And the landing burn for Stage 1 has begun. We are now just waiting for confirmation of good orbital insertion for our second stage. Nominal orbit insertion. There you've heard on the nets, nominal orbital Spread insertion. The signal, Cape Canaveral. We are now waiting for Falcon to stage land Stage 1 landing leg deploy. Back on our drone ship, just read the instructions. And as you can see and hear it, you have SpaceX's 173rd recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Payload separation confirmed. In Marsat, I6F2 is drifting away from Falcon 9's second stage out in space. And that confirms successful deployment of the MRSAT I6F2 payload. And that will end our webcast for tonight.